Before Cookies took Kith and Kin, um, she did not seem to be very comfortable in the role of a caregiver, even as a mother. She seemed a little lost. It was very difficult for me to even walk to take the children to school. There were times that I didn't want to get up. Cookies is the mother of five, with her two youngest being 11 and 5 years old. She has experienced numerous battles over the course of her life, including violence and abuse, both of a child as well as herself. After her youngest, Dana, was born, she suffered from postpartum depression that amplified the unresolved traumas that led to feeling disconnected from her baby. Sixty percent of kids are spending their most formative years in these informal settings where we could very easily ignore and pretend and put our head in the sand and pretend that they're not there or we can turn around and make a decision to go where the children are and provide services so that the adults providing care for them have the right tools on their belt to make sure by the time they get to kindergarten they're ready and consequently impact the outcomes for these kids. Through our Pritzker Children's Initiative, we focus on children from prenatal to age three. That's because science tells us that the foundation for all future learning, behavior, and health is actually laid in those first few years of life. In fact, Nobel laureate James Heckman tells us there is no greater return on investment for either private or public investment. And that's because of how important quality child care is to a parent's ability to work and to the future of that child, to their future short and long-term health benefits, and to their ability to get to school ready to learn. She came to class, and I remember she sat in the same spot that she sits to this day, five years later, and she looked sad. When Donna was born, she had a problem with reflux. I didn't know how to help her when she was choking. Because we bring them together in a support style type setting where everybody can sit around the table and talk about today, this kiddo's driving me crazy because he's biting all the other kids, or I haven't gotten sleep, or this child doesn't share with everybody else, or I just can't do it, I have all these kids and they're all driving me nuts. It is literally a space where you can put all the issues on the table. Yes, very much focused on early childhood, but what happens is when you have people come together week after week and you have the same staff member guiding the discussion and you develop trust and you build a relationship with the trainer and the peers in your group, something really, really different happens in that you start building a community. For many of these participants, they've never belonged to a group before. For the first time, they have a group of people they can share with about their own kids, the kids that they're taking care of, their grandchildren, and all the issues that come along with that. Outside of that, there are these amazing outcomes that relate to mental health issues, right? When you think of what happens when you put a group of 15, 20 people and they see each other each week, and you get to talk about whatever it is that you wanna talk about, you also start talking about your postpartum depression. You start talking about the potentially domestic violent situation that you've been in for years that you never thought you could leave from because if you did, you had to do it by yourself and you didn't even know where to start. You start to talk about uh, the struggles you have because perhaps this is not the country you were born and raised in and you're trying to figure out how to navigate the system. You're trying to figure out how to get resources for your kids and do what's best for them. But again, there's all these barriers in the way. So although we come in with the intent to really address some really significant early childhood issues and make sure kids are ready, there's all these other pieces that come in too that we get to address that hugely impact these kids because if, if mom or grandma or aunt is not doing well, then we know the children are not gonna get that bond and connection and things that all kids need. So it's really a holistic approach to how we address kids' needs. The first time I went to Kith and Kin, it was like coming home. She is an amazing woman. She's a trooper, she's a warrior. She has been through so much during her life. Kit and Kin teaches you how to help your children, to play with them and teach them, how to just be with the child. I was observing everyone in the group. 
I would just sit with my cell phone and the teacher would tell me, come with your daughter. I'd say, no, she doesn't want to. But it wasn't that she didn't want to. It's that I was uncomfortable because of all the stress I was feeling. That's what was keeping me from participating. Cookies would always prefer to um, just sit. So one day I just said, you know what, Cookies, I think you don't want to do it, but let's work together. I held her hand, uh, pulled her down to the floor with me. We sat down and we started working with Dana. Dana told her mom as she was speaking already, and she grabbed mom's hand and she just said, come sit with me, I want to play. And I think in that moment, Cookies realized, okay, it's not about me, it's about the child. As time went by, I felt more confident in everything. I learned to put myself at the same level as my daughter. I saw things from her perspective. I didn't feel like a mom anymore. I felt like, come on, let's play. Let's color, share, use scissors, things like that. And I began to interact more with her, to have a connection of mom and daughter. In that moment, it was more than mom and daughter. We were two peers doing the same work. What I felt was so beautiful. And it was just beautiful to see how she, all of a sudden there was a switch that went off and she, everything that she had learned or that she has now learned in Kith and Kin, she was able to apply it in that moment. We've recently joined an initiative with nine other national foundations to focus on informal child care. Almost seven million children under the age of five are in informal child care arrangements. They're with friends, family, and neighbor. What we don't know is what the quality of that child care is, but we do know that the number of formal care providers has declined. Informal child care is particularly important for people who live in rural communities or for parents that work non-traditional hours. In many cases, that's the only child care that's available to them. We talk about the Arizona Kithingham Project as being one of the largest models across the country. It's definitely one of the longest running programs across the country. When we think of two decades of doing this type of work and now the rest of the country looking at us for guidance and advice and learning how to do this work with family, friend, and neighbor, child care providers, that's huge. And that's so exciting because we get to be on the map for something that is unique and different and that has amazing outcomes for kids and for their caregivers. Dana is la numero uno en la clase ahorita. Dana is at the top of her class right now. The teacher asked me how she came to be doing so well if she had been in a class before. I told the teacher I had been taking her to kith and kin classes with me since she was a few months old. And now with her two-year-old grandson, she takes home all the leaps and bounds activities and she just sits there with him for hours. She has shown me video. She actually sings with him, talks to him. They love to draw together. And I can see that there is a lot of growth and development happening in that home with her grandchild. The children do benefit. My daughter-in-law used to take my grandson. He learned a lot. He likes to write a lot, to read books, and that sort of thing. My daughter-in-law would say, look how much Aiden likes to play with you. Aiden knows he's not with a babysitter. He knows that I'm like a friend. We can play together because I put myself at his level. What we are looking to do is to increase the supply of this informal child care and increase the quality of it. We hope that you will join us and that you will look into your community, try to understand what the informal child care arrangements are in your community, and do what you can to both grow it and increase the quality of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the program of the Kid and Kin. Cookies is an inspirational woman to me. I take pride in knowing that in some way I have maybe contributed to her, to the woman she is now. Um, but at the same time, I've learned a lot from her. In my life, it wasn't easy. But now I feel like uh, free. It's like a dream. <laughs>